Lesson 8.9, Word Problem Solving. Find the whole group using unit fractions. We can use the strategy, draw a diagram to solve fraction problems. We can draw a diagram to represent all the equal groups in a whole. Then we can draw the number of objects in each group. After that, we can add or multiply to find how many objects are in the whole thing. We first learned about unit fractions back in video 8.3. If you haven't seen it, there's a link in the description so you can watch it first. If we need to find 5 is one-third of what number, we see the denominator 3 in the fraction one-third, and we know to make three equal groups. So there'll be five in each group, and one of the three groups will be one-third. We put five into each group. Three groups times five in each group is equal to 15. So five is one-third of 15. So let's try some more of these. Dave has six books about history. One-fourth of his books are about history. So how many books does he have in all? We see this one-fourth. This means six is one-fourth of the total amount. And the denominator, four, tells us to make four equal groups. So we can draw a diagram of four equal groups. And there's going to be six in each group, and one of the four groups will be one-fourth. Six is one-fourth. So we draw six counters in each group because they're equal groups. Now we have six in that group, we have six in that group, and now we have six in all the groups. We have four groups of six. We have four times six, and that's equal to 24. So we know six is one-fourth of 24. An animal shelter has two orange tabby cats. One-eighth of the cats at the shelter are orange tabbies. How many cats does the animal shelter have? Well, this means that two cats are equal to one-eighth of all the cats. Two is one-eighth of what number? And the denominator tells us there are eight equal parts. There's eight equal groups. So we draw eight groups, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And since two are one-eighth, we draw two counters in the first circle. And because they're equal groups, we draw two counters in each group. Now we have two in each group. Two times eight is equal to 16, so there are 16 counters in all. That means there are 16 cats in the animal shelter. And we can find how many are not orange tabbies by subtracting the two that are. If these two are orange tabbies and the rest aren't, we can do 16 minus the two orange tabbies is equal to 14 that are not orange tabbies. So that means the shelter has 14 cats that are not orange tabbies. So let's try another example. We have three owls are wearing green ties and one fourth of all the owls are wearing green ties. So how many owls are there in all? Well, we have one-fourth as our fraction, and the denominator tells us there are four equal parts, fourth. So we draw four circles. So remember, the denominator tells us how many groups to make, how many circles to make. And because three owls are wearing green ties, we draw three counters into the first group. Then we draw three counters in the remaining groups because they're equal groups. We have four groups with three in each group. We have four times three. Four times three is equal to 12. We know three 
is one-fourth of 12. Let's try some more. What if four owls are wearing green ties, not three? Well, this means four owls are one-fourth of all the owls. And the denominator, the four, tells us to make four equal groups. And we draw four circles with four counters in the first one, because that's one-fourth. Then we draw four counters in the remaining groups because they're equal groups. We have four groups with four counters in each group. We have four times four, and four times four is equal to 16. That means four is one-fourth of 16. Bob bought a package of cookies, and he ate four of the cookies. He ate one-sixth of the cookies in the package. So how many cookies were in the package? Well, four cookies are one-sixth of all the cookies. And the denominator tells us to draw six equal groups. There's a six for the denominator. We draw six circles for six groups, and we put four counters for the four cookies into the first circle. Then we put four counters into the remaining circles because they're equal groups. Now we have six groups with four in each group. We have six times four. And six times four is equal to 24. That means four, this first circle, is one-sixth of 24. So we know when the package was brand new, there were 24 cookies in there. And four of them is one-sixth of the package. And we can use subtraction to find how many cookies are left in the package after he ate those four cookies. We know when the package was new, there were 24 cookies in the package. We use subtraction and take away the four that he ate, and 24 minus 4 is equal to 20. So we know there's 20 cookies left in the package. Now, this is the last video for Chapter 8, and you need to have memorized your seven facts by now. When we move on to Chapter 9, you should be working on your eight facts. Now, as we solve word problems, there's some steps we can use to make it easier. We ask ourselves, what do we need to find so we understand the question, and we find out what information we need to use to find that information and that answer. We can circle or underline important information if that helps you. And how will we use the information? What strategy will we use? You choose a strategy that we know. You can draw a diagram or a quick picture. We can make a table. We can even do guess and test. You test your answer to see if it's right. If it's not, you make another guess. We can make a list. We can even work backwards. And we pick the operation to use. Do we add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Or are we going to use a combination of these operations? Then we solve the problem and check our answer to make sure it makes sense. Four friends share three pizzas. So let's pretend these circles are the three pizzas. And each friend first eats half a pizza. So there's four friends, so that's one friend eats half, the second one eats half, the third one eats half, and then the fourth friend eats half of a pizza. How much more pizza does each friend need to eat to finish all the pizzas? Well, that's one whole pizza, that's another whole pizza, so the yellow one is still left, isn't it? And there's four friends. So we think there's one whole pizza remaining for four people. And we can draw a quick picture to help us solve the problem. We can make a circle, and we can divide it into four equal parts. That tells us that they'll each need to eat one-fourth more. There's four friends. They'll each get one-fourth. We can even figure out how much pizza each friend ate. If they each ate a half and then 
a fourth, then we can put that together for each friend. We can give a one-fourth piece to each friend, and they ate a half and a fourth. That's three-fourths of a pizza each. Dave bought five packs of gum. He gave away five pieces to his friends. So be careful, he bought five packs, but he only gave away five pieces. Now Dave has 25 pieces of gum left. How many pieces of gum were in each pack? So we need to find how much were in each pack. We know he had five packs, we know he gave five pieces away, and now he has 25 pieces of gum left. Well, we can solve this problem by working backwards. That's our strategy. We start with the fact that he had 25 pieces left. Then we see that he gave five away. We can add the 25 plus five to equal 30 to know that he had 30 in the beginning. That means there were 30 pieces of gum in five packs. We can use division. There were 30 in all divided into five packs. That means there were six pieces of gum in each pack. Did we answer the question? How many pieces of gum were in each pack? Yes, there were six. And we can check this with multiplication as an inverse operation, can't we? Six times five is equal to 30, and we know we did it right. So as you're solving word problems, get some scratch paper and draw some little pictures on the side or little diagrams that can help you. You can draw groups and make equal groups. You can use counters. You can work backwards or make a list, make a table. There's all kinds of strategies to solve word problems. We're going to move on to chapter nine, and I hope you're having a really good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.